Dorenda, thank you so much for joining me here on the Homeschool Sanity Show. I am excited to get to talk with you about this topic in particular. We both have five boys. We both homeschooled five boys. So it is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And I know it's a topic that is very popular with my listening audience. So before we jump into that, though, I would love to have you tell us more about you and your family. Okay. Well, I am married to Daryl and we've been married for 34 years. We have eight kids ages 19 to almost 33. And we have our 11th grandbaby on the way and we've been homeschooling from the beginning. So 30 years. I'm still not done because our youngest one is is taking a little bit longer than the rest of them. And so, uh, yeah, so that's that's um, kind of the bulk of my life. And then I also have authored a few books and have a podcast and um, love being able to encourage moms as much as possible. Mm, that is wonderful. So you mentioned you've been homeschooling for quite a while. Why did you choose to homeschool initially, though? Well, it's interesting because when I was a teenager, I met a homeschooling family and I absolutely loved them. And it just sort of stuck in my mind that just my impression of them. And then I had also picked up a book at a yard sale, believe it or not, um, called Better Late Than Early and happened to read that. I found I found child development and children just super interesting. And I worked with kids a lot. So I really just enjoyed reading this book. And it just resonated with everything in me. And I knew that the way that I wanted my kids to be educated, especially in the beginning, taking that slower start was not something that was going to happen in a public school. And I just, I wanted to be around my kids. I wanted them to be close by. I did not want to put them on a bus and send them to school for eight hours a day when they're five years old. I just, it didn't feel right to me. So that was initially the reason that I decided to homeschool. Unfortunately, my husband was in agreement with it when we met and decided to get married. He was fully on board. So I was thankful for that. But yeah, Yes, from the very beginning, I wanted to homeschool. That that's wonderful. Um, I definitely read that book um, early on in my mm -hmm. homeschooling um, years. <laughs> yep, yep, it it's a classic, right? <laughs> For sure. Okay, so let's switch gears and talk okay. about raising boys. I did not expect to have. Uh, a total of five boys. <laughs> I figured I would have a boy and a girl, maybe two boys and then a girl, uh, but God had other plans and I'm so glad that he did. Why do you think it's so important for those of us who are mothers of sons to consider how we are raising them at this time in history? Hmm. Well, I think that the culture and the church even are in a crisis when it comes to masculinity. And, you know, we're being lied to in all kinds of ways about gender and uh, about masculinity. And it's become trendy to hate men. And it's something that's just, it's been going on for a long time. And most of us have um, raised our kids somewhat around it, but it's really seemed to amp, uh, have amped up over the last several years. And the, the thing that's difficult is that moms know, they know there are differences, but they're struggling to reconcile um, what they know to be true about their boys and what the culture and the church are telling them. And so that message that we're getting is that being male is bad and being masculine is even worse. And so, uh, you know, we want to, as moms, we want to make sure that we are going back to what God has to say about masculinity, about um, aggression and things like that. The culture doesn't appreciate aggression because we aren't running for our lives anymore. You know, it used to be, you know, a hundred years ago, we needed men to, to fight and to protect and to, um, you know, to do these things because we were, we would be a, a complete um, we would just be completely vulnerable as women and our children would be vulnerable. And that's not really the case anymore, at least not in our culture. But what we do need um, are men who are willing to fight against the moral and political overreach that is really hell bent on destroying the family. And so we need men who are kind and understand how to help the helpless, but who are not afraid to wage war when necessary because they love 
what and who they're fighting for. And we need that going back to, to, um, for us, it's going back to God's word. What does he have to, what does he have to say? about this, about masculinity and about um, how we should be raising our boys. And so that's really kind of where I want to bring moms back to is just, okay, what is their nature? How are they wired and why are they wired that way? Because there is a reason for it. And so that's what I talk about um, quite often when I'm encouraging moms and and their boys um, in, in raising their boys. That's that is just excellent. And we we have gotten pretty far uh, afield from what God has to say about men and we really boys. have. We really have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and and you know, the the school system is a is a terrible place, I feel like, for most boys because mm-hmm. they are just they are fearfully and wonderfully made to be active and busy and competitive and physical and all these things are frowned upon and they're expected to act like girls. And Mm -hmm. um, that is just not in their nature to do. And it's just not going to go well. I know looking back, I didn't know when we decided to homeschool that we were going to have five boys, but my goodness, if I had put them into the system, I am confident that they would have had all kinds of problems. And instead, they thrived and they're now, you know, adults with so much confidence and just love to learn. And they're just, they're wonderful human beings. And so much of it came back to just being willing to under, have an understanding of them and then walk in that understanding of them. This does not mean that it's a free for all, that they just get to do whatever they want, whenever they want. They need boundaries. I talk about that in my, (laughs) in my new book, but it's, it's, we need to understand what those boundaries need to look like for them. And Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just important to gain understanding. And I think that's really my heart is to equip moms with a better understanding of boys and how they're wired and where they're headed because it's a really great place, but we have to know how to direct that energy. Right. So why do you think that boys today are so misunderstood And then, and I know this as a psychologist who did practice for a while before I stayed home with my own children, why are so many of them diagnosed with things, with Mm. disorders Mm -hmm. that probably don't even apply? It's normal behavior, right? Why is that happening? Right. Well, I think it's happening because we've set up a very uh, a system that favors femi- uh, feminism or favors girls. The school system is set up in a way that's more favorable to to the way that a girl would learn than a way that a boy would learn, especially in those early years. They need to be running and playing and building forts. And the, th- the thing that's so amazing about boys, they have so much energy and we look at them and we think, oh my goodness, they're going to tear the house <laughs> apart. Yeah, they probably will unless you give them a mission, unless you are directing that energy because they have three questions that are always going through their heads. Number one, who's in charge? Number two, who's on my team? And number three, what are we doing? And so it's our job as moms to be answering that question regularly. But these boys were wired by their creator towards aggressiveness. Now, there's a sliding scale. There's boys who are far less aggressive, boys who are far more aggressive, because that's the nature of God and his creation. He is just very, very creative. And so he gives us this sort of sliding scale of boys. But they were created to build, to lead, to protect, to provide and conquer. And so Throughout the day, oftentimes, the things that they're doing are related to that. They're trying to do those things, but they may be doing them poorly. They may be doing them (laughs) ill-timed. It may not be the situation where they should be doing that. Um, And so it's our job as moms to sort of make that connection for them so that we – so that they are – they are more understood, if that makes sense. They're misdiagnosed mm-hmm. and misunderstood because, because our society tells us that aggressiveness is bad, masculinity is bad, conquering is bad. These things are all bad. And so mm-hmm. what's the solution? Oh, let's let's slap a label on them and shove some medication down their throats and try to get them to calm down and be more like a girl. 
And it's mm-hmm. like, that is the last thing on earth we want to do with these boys. You know, mm-hmm. um, they are, one of the things that they love is just a ton of physical activity. Like they love to wrestle. Like when you and I have coffee together <laughs> and we chat, it just fills our cup and it bonds us. And guess what? When they're smacking each other around and wrestling on the ground, when boys are doing that, that's exactly what they're doing. It's the same exact feeling that they get. Now, (laughs) I cannot relate to that at all, but it's not Mm -hmm. important that I relate to it. It's important that I understand it. And so I Mm -hmm. think these are some of the reasons that boys are often misdiagnosed is it's just a lack of understanding um, and a lack of tolerance for how they were wired and how God Mm -hmm. created them. You know, when you, when you brought up the wrestling, it reminded me, it is honestly one of my favorite motherhood memories. I had a just turned three-year-old son and an 11 month old son. And we had just gotten, we had just moved into this house that I'm in right now. And we had um, a new sofa delivered. And so I had my three-year-old and my 11-month-old boy sitting on the couch, and I was stunned when my 11-month-old crawled on top of his older brother and started wrestling him. (laughs) You're 11 months (laughs) old. (laughs) What are you doing? Right. And he was also, and still is, a mellow personality. So he's not, you know, like high oh, strung or, or right. anything like that, but still that behavior was just hardwired into him. It was mm-hmm. so obvious. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what are some other things that moms should expect when they have boys? I mean, you've mentioned some of them, but can you <laughs> kind of give us more? Because I think sometimes, especially like when a mom is, has Maybe she has had a girl first, <laughs> and I know you had that experience. Right. Um, and then a boy comes along. <laughs> yep, two girls first. Right, right. I had boys first. So, um, but the mom okay. is wondering, what what differences should I expect um, from raising daughters? That's a really, really good question because I think it's important for us to shift our expectations. So I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, There are some things that I think every mom should be aware of, and there's more. I have a list that I'm going to share with you. I'm sure that there are moms out there who would be um, shouting and add this and add this, but here are some (laughs) basics, okay? Expect to be grossed out. It's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen. And again, our job is to teach our boys how to read the room. (laughs) Whether this is the time and the place for it, we get to decide that as parents. We get to set those boundaries. But it's going to happen. And you can also expect them to push boundaries. And again, you know, things like roughhousing and things like that, they need to learn to read the room, learn what is the time and the place that they can do that because we want to make sure that they are allowed to do that. We're not going to want to keep a lid on them all the time. It's never going to work, but they are going to push boundaries. And so our job is to set the boundaries, to keep them secure And, um, but also be ready for reasonable, respectful compromises because sometimes, um, they'll throw something at me that I'm, I didn't, I hadn't thought of, you know, and I may be making a rule that doesn't actually make sense and they may point it out to me and I need to be willing to, to consider that. But overall, it's really important to keep boundaries very firmly set in place because they're going to be pushing them on a regular basis. Again, going back to those three questions, who's in charge, who's on my team and what are we doing? You know, so we want (laughs) to, we want those boundaries to be clear as much as possible. Okay. Expect to laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep your sense of humor, be goofy with them because they love it when we're goofy with them. They love it when they can make us laugh. And so they feel valuable. Um, They're just, it's just something that they seem to to want and need. So expect to laugh a lot. Expect to go to the emergency room. Boys have a need to do dangerous things. They are constantly wanting to press the boundaries of what are my limitations? And when they find those limitations, they tend to repeatedly go back 
to see if they can figure it out and make it work. So, you know, where a girl would walk away and say, you know, I'm not doing that again. That wasn't worth it. They'll go back for more. It'll be challenge accepted, you know, is how they're (laughs) going to look at it. And so um, you're going to end up in the emergency room. And, you know, our job is to keep them uh, alive. I often say to to moms, one of your biggest jobs is to keep them alive. But that doesn't mean we're going to helicopter over them. We need to let them do dangerous things. And, you know, as parents, we get to decide where those boundaries are. I could give you a quick example. Um, When our son was about six years old, he asked me if he could ride his bike off the porch onto the gravel. So it's like about, there was like one step and then it was gravel. So I'm assessing the whole thing and I'm thinking, okay, worst case scenario, first of all, the porch isn't very long, so he can't get going too fast. Um, He'll start on one end, he'll jump off, and the worst case is he may fall into the gravel. Can I live with that? And I thought, yes, I can do that, you know. And so I let him go and he just pedaled across that porch and (laughs) flew off the end and crashed and burned. He didn't even cry. And I said to him, well, did you learn anything from that? He said, yeah, I learned I don't want to do that again. And I Mm -hmm. thought, great, lesson learned. Well, I found out later he went back out and and tried again until he mm-hmm. got it right and and this is this is what they will do and it's just to be expected um also expect them to want to be independent they kind of like have this need even at a young age um not all boys but a lot of them to just sort of feel like a little man and we need mm-hmm. to let them have that feeling. And so that can be anything from, you know, just getting time with other boys to play, no girls involved, um, Mm -hmm. time with their dad. Um, My boys were very independent when it came to homeschooling. They did not want my help. And I wondered sometimes if that was healthy, like, are you just not willing to ask for help? And so anyway, it was one of those things where as a mom, I had to sort of gauge on a daily basis whether, um, whether they should be asking me for help or not. But most of the time I just said, okay, if you want to do this yourself, that's totally fine. You know, we always check their work at the end of the day. So we found out how well it worked for them or not. And But they just had this need to be independent. Expect them to not like showers. Um, <laughs> some of them, when they get to be about 15 and all of a sudden they start noticing girls a little more then all of a sudden, sometimes showers become more of a big deal. But a lot of times they just don't even notice that they stink and they don't care. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So also expect them to develop more slowly than girls their age, especially early on. You don't need to worry about that. They will catch up eventually. But this is, again, why taking a more unhurried approach into book work in those early years is really wise, especially for boys, just waiting Mm -hmm. until you know for sure that they're ready. Um, expect them to lose a chunk of their brains as they approach (laughs) puberty. You know, their bodies are working hard to grow from a boy to a man. And so what's going to happen is you might have like this 10 or 11 year old boy who is just, he is awesome. Like he remembers all of his chores. He's so responsible and you're so happy because you've done the training and now you've got the goods, right? He's helpful and, um, responsible. And then, the hormones start happening and all of a sudden he can't remember to take out the garbage to save his life. And you're wondering, is this rebellion? Is this, you know, so some questions are good, but to expect that possibly as they go into those teen years, they're going to lose some of that ability. They'll get it back again eventually. But, but just um, really doling out a certain amount of grace for that and also, they can be hard on themselves when that's happening, especially if you've got an older, oldest son who wants to be so responsible and he's just kicking himself because he keeps forgetting things. And so our job is basically to say, look, you know, your body is working to change from a boy to a man. And that's a process that's going to take several years. And this is part of that process. It won't always be like this. So let's try to work together to make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities. I will try to, you know, show as much grace as I can, but I also expect you to remain responsible for your chores and things like that. So doing it in a way that lets them own that part of their journey with their dignity intact. So those are just a few things that I feel like every mom should be ready to expect if you have boys. Right. And, you know, I mean, we could go on and on. And, you know, I think you said that (laughs) at the beginning, uh, that there is a lot. And Uh one thing I just wanted to add because of my own experience of having 
four boys in a row, um, that Mm -hmm. a lot of women told me that they felt sorry for me when, when they found out I was expecting a fourth boy. They said, you know, boys, Uh they, um, when they, they get married and they have kids, they just, they pretty much are done with you. You know, they just don't, they don't care. Um, you can't be close to a boy the way that you can um, be with a daughter. And I'm just telling you, those things are not true. <laughs> not just from my own experience, Mm-mm. but from other people's experience as well. Um, I have mothers who have only sons and um, they are so incredibly close um, to their sons. I know um, a man who had only brothers in his uh, family. He lived with and cared for his mother when she was dying of cancer for a number of years. Mm. Um, so I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't want moms to approach this um, this great privilege that we have of of raising sons with all these stereotypes that I just don't think there is evidence for. Um, so anyway, to, had to add right, that. <laughs> right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think that the relationship definitely changes as they become adults and get married. There is, there is a noticeable shift, but there's never, um, it's never a lack of loyalty. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a, It's just a shift in priority for him as it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a wife now. But what I have found is that my sons are, um, their love for me is exactly the same. Like it Mm -hmm. hasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. And, And you're right. Like it's, there's this really good feeling too, as I'm getting older, I'm 56 and my husband is 63 and I've talked to my boys about this and just, and I didn't expect to get teary eyed because I don't cry very easily, but I just told them, I said, you know, at this point in the game, I, you start to think about the possibility that someday I may lose my husband. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I will be completely cared for by these Mm -hmm. boys. Like all the things my husband would take care of, my boys will take care of, and Mm -hmm. I won't have to make this big shift um, into widowhood with all these responsibilities that I never had before. And now I have to take care of and just, just knowing that. And uh, there was, there's such a comfort in it. And it started way back at the beginning when we made that investment into our relationship with these boys, where we respected the fact that they were male. We respected how they're wired and we tried to understand and and um, enjoy, just thoroughly enjoy those differences. And so it starts back then, you know, when you're at the beginning and and it and as we do that, and this is why I think it's so important for moms to get this message um, about understanding your boys and how they're wired and how to direct that energy that they have in a positive way so that later on down the road, there's this mutual respect between, you know, I respect them as I respected them as little men. I respect them as big men and they respect me because Mm -hmm. I respected them. And so there's this mutual thing that's gone on. So yes, you're absolutely right. You don't have to you don't really have to be concerned about that. If you're investing well now, mm-hmm. um, it will come back to you down the road. Absolutely. And I feel, I feel the very same way um, when I think about, you know, the future. If, if that mm-hmm. is in my future to be a widow, mm-hmm. I feel very secure that I have mm-hmm. boys who would, um, would be there for me. So that, that right. is a wonderful right. gift. Okay, it so is. you really speak my language when you use the word boundaries. I'm mm-hmm. <laughs> all about it. Mm-hmm. And you say that boundaries are especially important when you are raising boys. Can you tell us yes. why? Well, because they're mission oriented um, and they're wired to build and wired to lead and wired to protect and wired to conquer, they are going to 
push those boundaries with us because the, again, they're continually asking who's in charge. And so I remember there was a point at which um, I was, you know, just, I was in the house and all of a sudden, you know, we're going through our day and all of a sudden I realized I was no longer running the show. The boys were, they were, they were telling everybody what to do. They were telling me what to do. And they were, and I don't know that they even realized they were doing it. I don't think that it was like an effort on their part to do it. It just came naturally to take the helm. And so I sat them down and I said, listen, I love that you guys want to lead, that you want to provide, that you want to be the, the leader in our home. And someday you're going to be the leader in your own home. You can have your own wife and your kids and your job, all things that you're going to be in charge of. But this is not that time. And I am not your wife. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just basically kind of had to clarify what our roles were for now. And, and, but still at the same time, appreciating the fact that yes, this is part of how you're put together. I respect it. I appreciate it. Um, and there are times that I would allow them those leadership roles along the way to mm -hmm. practice, but on a daily basis, that was not their role to do that. So what I told them was, you know, right now you're learning to respect and honor me as your mom, but also at the same time, respect and honor women in general. So he's, they're learning how to treat women, how to treat their, their sisters as a, as an example as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're, I would just said, you're still in training. This is the training ground. It's like boot camp for real life. So right here in this family with these siblings and with me as your mom. And so it was just important for them to have that reiterated to them on a regular basis. And, you know, because by nature, uh, they want to lead, um, we, we have to be watching and know that this is a blessing. Um, mm -hmm. but to be good leaders, they first have to go through the training that the scripture describes, which says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother so that it will go well with you. And I would remind them the opposite was true. If you don't, it will not go well with you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they needed to hear that in no uncertain terms. It needed to be clear. And the thing I love about boys, typically, you can be a straight shooter with them. Mm -hmm. You can tell them, look, you either do this or this is going to happen. And then you make sure that you make it happen. If, if you know, A doesn't happen, then B is going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. you need to have those um, consequences ready. They need to be firm. They need to be quick. Um, not a lot of words, not a lot of, you know, hoopla about it, but just very clear. These are the boundaries and you crossed over it. So now this is what's going to happen. And sometimes I felt I had to almost personify like a drill sergeant with them. I got the best results when I did that because there was no doubt that I was in charge. You know, as a mom, we said, kind of want to just, we want to say things sweetly and nicely <laughs> because we're nurturers, but sometimes that is not what they need. They need a mm -hmm. drill sergeant. They need someone to say, you go do that now. You go mm -hmm. do that now. We're not being a mean mom. We're being the, <laughs> we're being the alpha in the family for now until they are ready to have their own family and lead their own lives. But, um, you know, the scriptures talks about how you have to learn to be a servant before you can lead, you know, that's just, it's part of the process. And so the boundaries, when we're setting boundaries with our boys, we are teaching them to self-regulate. We are teaching them self-control. My husband and I used to drive, our big van full of kids to my brother's house. And we would go through this desert and there was this huge penitentiary there. And every time we drove by it, my husband would point at it and he would say, this is where people go who don't have self-control. And this is why we're teaching you self-control. <laughs> very good. Very good. You know, that's pretty clear, pretty clear picture yeah, there. But right. you know, sometimes often that's what boys need. You know, there are more sensitive boys and you may have to work with them a little bit on being more resilient mm -hmm. and not as emotional because we do want, you know, th that sensitivity is a gift, but I don't think that it should just stay like that. I think there should also be a part of them that is 
is grows to be resilient and tough and strong. And mm-hmm. we have to help them do that. Like my grandson is 18 months old mm-hmm. and he's a very sensitive soul. He cries very easily. If he sees me crying, he immediately, the <laughs> lip comes out and it, he doesn't even have to know why it just, he just mm-hmm. does. And so he's really empathetic. Um, but so he cries easily. And sometimes he feels sorry for himself when he gets hurt, when he's not really hurt. And my son will look at him and he'll say, Sully, can you be tough? And he says, so you'll hear him go, I be tough. Oh. You know? <laughs> That's adorable. And it's so cute because he's still kind of crying and he's high pitched. Mm-hmm. But he's teaching oh. him like, you can do this. You can come back from this. This isn't mm-hmm. what this is all, you know, it's not all about mm-hmm. being hurt and upset. You're okay. You can move on and teaching them to self-regulate. And that's what we want to do. We want sons. We want our sons to grow into men who have immense amounts of self-control and mm-hmm. can handle any situation. And so that starts now as we're raising them. Right. Yes, absolutely. Well, to go along with that, I know that you feel strongly that work is a gift from the Lord Mm -hmm. and that instilling Mm -hmm. a strong work ethic into our boys is a gift that we can give them. I completely agree. But would you speak more to that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So our kids can have all kinds of skills and abilities, but if they have no work ethic, those skills and abilities are not going to serve them nearly as well. So building a strong work ethic in our kids actually creates more opportunities for them. Um, One of the things that we, this is something that we, my husband and I sort of naturally did with our kids. We didn't realize we were doing it because we're both really hard workers. We never thought to ourselves, oh, we need to teach our kids to be hard workers. We just did it. Like this Mm -hmm. is, this is what we're doing. Jump in. Let's do this thing. We're doing this together. And we didn't really question it. But as they started to get older and we realized we were starting to see some huge benefits from them knowing how to work hard. Um, things like when they did projects with other people or they were working for someone else, the neighbor maybe hired them to to do some stuff. They were just so impressed with their work ethic. And that word gets out. Mm-hmm. It gets out that, oh, those Wilson boys, they know how to work. And these boys have never wanted for work in their lives because, in fact, they're constantly being asked to do more and more and more. And they have to they have to put boundaries on it because, because they are so unusually um, hard mm-hmm. workers. And so I think the thing we have to remember when it comes to work is that God, he, he told Adam and Eve in the garden, he, he gave a mandate to mankind as he told Adam and Eve to steward the garden, to take care of it. So this was before the fall. So we know that work is inherently a good thing. Now, since the fall, of course, it's a lot more difficult. We have a lot of thorns and thistles and obstacles and things like that, but it doesn't take away the fact that working is a gift from the Lord. It's also a mandate from him and that it is a good thing. And so when we teach our kids to work hard, we are we are teaching them perseverance we're teaching them resilience. Um, what happens when we're teaching them to work hard is it brings out heart issues that need to be dealt with. Um, it gives them something to conquer. And this is a huge thing with boys. You want to shoulder them with age-appropriate responsibilities as early as possible. And then praise. Like, you are doing such a good job. I don't know how I could do this without you. You say to the five-year-old who's bringing in groceries, right? Um But boys need something to conquer and work is one of the most easily accessible missions that we can give them as they're growing up. And so, because there's always things that need to be done around the house, the yard, the cars. And so I kept a running list of things that I had ready to roll whenever I needed to dole out those jobs. Either maybe as uh, one of my sons was just provoking people. He has a little too much energy. And that's what I would tell him. I'd say, look, you've got a lot of energy. You've got enough energy to provoke everybody. So I need you to go out and wash the car. There you go. And so as, as we're giving them um, – we're giving them a strong work ethic. We're also giving them something to conquer. Um, it also work a strong work ethic builds confidence and mm-hmm. skill sets 
and again, opens up opportunities for them. Essentially, it prepares them for life. Mm -hmm. Life is full of work. And if we can teach our kids, not only by example, but also just having them engage in, in much of this work, if we can teach them what it looks like to be satisfied with a job well done, mm -hmm. um, that's a huge gift to them. So one of the things that I like to do is when we've accomplished a task, step back and look at it. Look at how, whether it's just picking up a room that was a disaster. Okay, you guys, okay, take a look at this room. It, it, look how messy it is. Even take a picture of it if you want. And then afterwards, you could do like a before and after picture, but have them step back and look at it. Look at the difference. Doesn't this feel so much more calm? You know, I mean, that's part of what work does is it brings order to chaos, which is what God does. That's God's work. That's not the enemy's work. That's not the world's work. That's God's work. He takes what's chaotic and he brings order to it. So every time we clean up a room, every time we do the dishes, um, we are bringing order to chaos. Even cooking a meal, we're taking all these different ingredients and we're putting them all together in a certain way to make this wonderful, nutritious, nourishing meal that we get to enjoy together. So if we can be pointing those things out to our kids throughout the day as we're just doing our normal everyday things, makes all the difference in the world. Hmm. Well, I love too, that instilling a strong work ethic in our boys can be translated to homeschooling too, because studying mm -hmm. can be work. And if yes. we give, give them that good work ethic with studying, um, it will really set them up for success. So I love that. Yes. Um, I want to talk now about your book because <laughs> I'm excited to talk about it. And um, I feel like we could we could talk for another couple of hours about all the the various topics that you've included <laughs> in there. I want to tell you all my favorite stories, but I'm not going to do that because I want people to be able to get a hold of your book and enjoy those stories for themselves. But I want to I want to tell right. the listener that if you are looking for how can I modify my homeschooling. Um, when I am teaching boys, you are going to find um, some great ideas and just a general philosophy that I so appreciate in your book. Um, and I should point out right away that you call this book a mercifully short book <laughs> because mothers of boys are busy. <laughs> We have our hands full mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't take offense at that, um, at that comment. I don't know if you ever did having eight children, but when people say, would say to me, oh, you have your hands full. I, I didn't think that was a bad thing to say. It's like, I do. <laughs> I am busy. I, I literally yes. have my hands full I, of kids. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, but my heart full too. Absolutely. Right. right? Um, so, mm -hmm. um, yes. I, I just want to say that. I I loved this book. Um, I was able to read it in one sitting, which I think you will so appreciate that. Uh, not that it's too short. It's definitely <laughs> not too short. Um, I laughed out loud and I resonated with <laughs> so much of what you were sharing. Um, I've never lived on a farm, You, but I mean, with my boys, I actually grew up on a farm for right. many of my childhood years, but I've never raised my boys on a farm. Um, but I could just, I could just relate and I could identify with so many of the things. And so I think my listener will too. Um, but tell us what your heart was um, for writing this book and what you hope moms will take away from it. Um, I think my heart for writing the book was what I mentioned earlier, giving moms a much better understanding of their sons because they're not, we are not very well equipped that way because of the way that the culture is right now. I don't think it's going to stay that way. I honestly <laughs> see a lot, a lot of parents pushing back against <laughs> it and saying no. I want to raise real men. Um, now we've always got that that um, 
oh, that extreme version out there that's distorted and that kind of thing. And that's not what we're talking about here. What I'm Mm -hmm. talking about in this book is a, a a biblical masculinity. So there's a, there's a care, there's a love, there's a wanting to help the helpless, but, uh, and knowing when to be tender, but also knowing when to fight. So Mm -hmm. we're not just supposed to raise nice guys. We're so, we're raising warriors and dragon slayers. Mm-hmm. We have a need for men to step up and play their part in the culture, in the, our church. And I'm seeing that potentially happening here. I, I'm a long game person. So I'm mm-hmm. planting seeds and like crazy right now because I believe in 10 to 15 years, we're going to see a switch. We're going to see things... It, I heard a pastor say once, stupidity is not sustainable. And I completely (laughs) agree with that. I think that what's happening right now is stupid. It goes Mm -hmm. against God's word. It's foolishness is what the Bible Mm -hmm. would probably call it in Proverbs. Okay. So it's not sustainable. It's not going to last very long. It's very short lived. We can get all up in arms about it, or we can set to work. Mm -hmm. And do what God has put in front of us. If you have sons, you make that investment. And that's what I want. So I want moms to walk away from this going, I understand him more. I appreciate him so much more. We're going to have the adventure of a lifetime as we raise these boys. That's what I want. I want them to laugh. I want them to just walk away from this experience raising boys going, that was a blast. (laughs) And that's my hope and prayer for moms. (laughs) Well, you and know exactly I exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> yes, I mean that, that is. I mean, I say that all the time. That homeschooling. Mm-hmm. Now I'm getting emotional, but it has been a blast. Not just mm-hmm. homeschooling, but parenting these boys. And I still, yes. I still have yes. um, two of them, two of them living with us right now. Um, not because they're not working. <laughs> they they are working. Right. Right. Um, but. It's it's just been wonderful to have that special time with them, even as adult sons. It's just it's yes. it is amazing, yes. and I want it's so every much mom fun. I mean, to have that. Yes, yeah. yes. My husband and I were uh, we had we had had dinner with a few of our sons, and we were heading over the same direction. But they decided to walk where they were mm-hmm. going, and we were driving, and so we're driving along the road, and we passed them up. These three bearded men, right? And I looked at my husband and I said, I made those. (laughs) I mean, really, God made them. But you think about it. They started out so tiny, so small, Mm -hmm. so helpless. And now they're just, they're men out there making a difference, doing amazing things in each of their own spheres and loving to come home and spend time with us. Um, we live um, currently on acreage with, we've got my son and his wife and two kids on one side of us, our 21-year-old on the other, each in tiny houses. I have a daughter uh, who lives downstairs. It's a completely separate unit um, with her husband and four kids. So we, and got another son who's going to move on to the property. And so it's like th- this communal wow. living type of thing. And I love, <laughs> love, love it. It's so fun. Um, I bet. But yes, that's. That's what we're wanting. We're wanting to be able to look back and go, that was an absolute blast. I would do that all over again in a heartbeat. And I can say that I would. All the work. Oh my gosh. There were days I thought I am going to die of exhaustion, (laughs) but I didn't. I did not. And I look back and I think, oh, those are beautiful days, hard some days and tiring, but Mm -hmm. so much satisfaction Um, when your head hits the pillow at night and you're like, I gave it everything and God, the rest is up to you. (laughs) Right, right. And on that note, I do want to just say something that you say um, at the outset of your book that obviously fathers have a huge responsibility in raising yes, their sons and yes. daughters, but I would say, and I think you said that, especially with sons, and you're not trying to say like, we, we have to take all of this on, um, unless we have to, no. unless, unless their father is right. available and in the picture. But right. You know, I, I found that I think as, as a homeschooling mom, 
I took on too much responsibility for my kids. And I think probably because I'm mm -hmm. a psychologist too, I thought mm -hmm. it's all up to me. <laughs> you know, I've got to <laughs> make these kids right, turn out right. right. Um, but it, that is really um, a wonderful thing to be able to um, give over that it's a, it's a shared responsibility. Um, yes. But you yes, are yes. And I, I talk about that in the book. Yes, exactly. But you are specifically speaking to mothers. Um, and, uh, and of course, right. you know, this is a book that though, that you could have your husband read and he would, he would agree with you and, and add his perspective on mm -hmm. it. So I think that could be pretty fun yes. too. Um, mm -hmm. but definitely. Yes. I definitely want you to yeah. um, get your hands on this book. And the day that um, this podcast is releasing is the day that your book is coming out. So tell us yes. how we can get a copy of it. Okay. Well, you can get it at my website, DorindaWilson.com. I think if you have an Amazon account, I would prefer to send you there just because it it gets things moving there at, at Amazon. It's like a freight train you're trying to get going. And when you self-publish, you don't have benefits of uh, pre-orders and things like that. So, uh, but either place is fine. Um, and either place, if you decide to purchase that book um, today, March 5th or tomorrow, March 6th, um, I'll give a link to Melanie to share. And all you have to do is go to that link with your receipt number and you will receive free access to the Unhurried Homeschooler, a simple, mercifully short book on homeschooling the audiobook version, which has never actually been available before. So that is my gift to you if you will purchase it March 5th or 6th and just look for Raising Boys to Men. That is a fantastic benefit. You will not want to miss that. So um, please go to my website link. I'm going to share that after our conversation so that you don't miss it. Um, Dorinda, this was wonderful and again, I know I could talk with you at length about a number of topics. Maybe you would agree to come back and talk about unhurried homeschooling. I know that is a very popular yes. book of yours. I would love to talk more with you in mm -hmm. the future. I'd love that. I'd love that. Thank you.